And good morning. It's Saturday, the 29th of November 2014. Welcome along to this week's live chat show, United Kingdom Talk. Uh, special welcome this morning to our first girls who are with us today. Marge in Oklahoma, who writes, Good morning, watching from my tablet. I haven't even got a tablet. You've got something. I haven't got a tablet, Marge. Oh, is that a bit loud? Sorry. I haven't got a tablet, Marge. Oh, you have come into the real world, dear. Is it an iPad? Isn't is it an iPad? Oh, or is it a um? I don't know what are the other ones and a Nexus or a uh, what's that book reading one? Kindle, Kindle. Have you got a Kindle? Can't understand why you'd want to read a book on a blooming electronic. It's something about holding a book, isn't it? It's quite nice. Although I can't read books, Marge. I get bored. I, I've, I've said this before. I'll pick up a book. Have I got one here? I don't know. No, there isn't one in here. I'll, I'll pick up a book, read a couple of pages, and rather than see the rest of the story waiting to be read, I just see the amount of pages, and I think, oh, I can't be bothered, and I put it to the side. <laughs> Anyone else do that? I, do, I haven't got patience to read books. Thank you, Marjorie, and good morning to you. And good morning to Millie, who wrote a, a little email... That uh, we're going to read out in a second. Where's that, where's that gone? One minute. I printed that off. Where's that gone? Oh, maybe it's over there. Just a second. Is it on here? Oh, there it is. Thank God for that. Can't have people sending in emails and not being read out, dear. Uh, Millie sent in an email as well, so we'll be reading that out. All right. Now, you can join in. I think uh, if you're watching the live show, the little little information label is up there now with the Skype in and the phone in number as well. Uh, if you're with us live, you can indeed join in live. We have a Skype and a phone number as well, OK? The Skype in is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's the Skype in. There's a uh, phone in number as well. If you're in the UK, there's a local London number, 20 Eight one double three six three five eight, O two O eight one double three six three five eight, and whether you're watching live or watching perhaps or listening to a recording of the show, then you can join in uh, by emailing, and that is Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. All right. Um. I, look at this. I've got a... Bl I can't believe it. I've never had one of these before. I've got a summons. A summons for non-payment of council tax in the county of Berkshire, East Berkshire's Magistrates Court. Let me just show this to you without revealing my personal address to you. Look. Look. A summons. Well, I opened this and I thought, what on earth is this for? I've never had a summons in my life, dear. Owing people money? I don't think so. Today, an officer of Bracknell Forest has made a complaint to me that you have not paid the total amount due, which is shown in the box below. This amount is for council tax you are liable to pay. The complaint applies for a liability order to be made against you and you are therefore summoned to appear before the justices. This is like Berkshire Magistrates. Oh, I've seen it all now, dear. And I've got a date and everything. I couldn't believe it. Wednesday the 10th of December. At the court hearing, uh, we, you will be asked to show why you have not paid the outstanding amount. And I thought, this can't be right. I've never not paid a bill, dear. I'm not one of those people that waits for the red bill to come in or anything like that. I pay them. So, I got out my little bit of paper and I keep a record of everything I pay and everything. And, um, with the council... Uh, tax bill you can pay monthly which i which i elect to do if i have the choice of paying monthly or in one lump sum i do pay monthly you know because it's like a like a like a free loan really isn't it oh good morning kieran kieran's with us as well good morning he's 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 becoming a loyal follower isn't he good morning kieran oh good afternoon kieran sorry anyway um so i got out my bit of paper and there you know a hundred pound paid hundred pound hundred pounds and um i my payments run from April to January, right? So I'm looking at this and they say I owe £265, right? And I went through my little thing and I thought, well, 
okay, maybe I haven't done the November one yet. Do you see what I mean? But I kind of pay irregularly, thinking in my own mind that, well, you've got until January to pay it, so that's fine. You know, I'll send them a... And instead of doing, like, £93 a month, I might send, you know, £100 in April, £100 in June, you know, £200 in August. I might miss September... And, they, and carry on, as long as I get to the full amount by January. I have done that ever since I've been here, like, for 21 years. So I didn't see a problem. So I rung up this girl on the phone. I nearly, I nearly said bitch on the phone, sorry. <laughs> I, I spoke to this bitch on the phone. <laughs> oh, shut up. Don't be bloody offended. It's only a joke. Stop being offended. I spoke to this bitch on the phone and I says to her, I, I explained to her the situation and she said, well, you haven't kept up with your payments. I said, well, which payment is that? Oh, you should have made a payment of uh, in November. I said, well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. I've got till January. No, she says you haven't got till January to do it. She said you're behind with your payments. And I'm like, yeah, but I've got until January to, to, to do it, haven't I? She said, no, you've got to keep up with your payments. And then she starts lecturing me. Oh, it's like a tax. It should be the second most important bill that you pay after your mortgage. And I thought she's going to start bloody lecturing me then, bitch. You know. <laughs> I said, well, um... I said, well, I'm very sorry. I says, well, what do I do? She says, oh, well, if, if, um... If it goes... If you let it go to court, you'll have the full amount to pay, £265. Plus... £98 for the fact that it's gone to court. I said, well, how do I stop that happening then? She said, I'll have to ask you to pay the full amount now. I said, what, apart from, you mean from November? No, because you've missed a payment, then you have to pay the full amount there and then, until January. I thought, oh, here's my credit card number. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't believe it. Why didn't they just send a little reminder? And I worked out in my head, right, that actually the amount owing up to that point was about 50 quid. And it's shocking. Have you ever had anything like that? A summons, dear. A summons. Oh, nearly died. It's a good job the neighbours don't see anything like this coming in my door. What on earth would they think? What about the people in Waitrose? What would they think if they saw a summons coming through my door like that? I'm shocked and horrified, boys and girls. Shocked and horrified that I've received such a thing. Anyway, it's all paid and sorted now, but I don't, I don't understand what's going on. They must be desperate for the money at the moment. Mind you, they're wasting a lot of money here in Bracknell at the moment, putting bloody traffic lights on roundabouts. Oh, God, why do they do that? The amount of times I've seen that, and the traffic slows down. It doesn't improve it at all. Uh, when I travel home, often I use the M3 motorway, right? And... On the way, on the last bit of road, it's the um, it's the road coming from Richmond to the M3. On that last bit of road, there are, I think, four roundabouts. When I first moved up here, there were no traffic lights on those roundabouts. Now, the Americans have got a fantastic idea, and I probably in other countries as well, that after a certain time, the yellow, you know, red, yellow, green, the yellow light flashes, which means... Proceed with caution. OK, so you can go through the flashing yellow light after a certain time in the States. I don't know if it's all over the States, certainly in places I've been, say, I don't know, six o'clock at night, maybe. Then for the rest of the night, it's just a yellow flashing light. No red, no green, just a yellow flashing one. So you can go if you think it's safe. All right, I tell you what I tell you while I'm telling you that. So. In the period I've been living here over the 21 years, gradually, almost every... Uh, is it every roundabout? One minute, let me just work this out. It is. I think it is. Oh, no, except the last one. Every roundabout, except... The, no, that one's got one as well. One minute. That one has. Let me think. That one has. That one has. Yeah. On, on, uh, in, the last, in the years that I've been here, every single roundabout going up from... Um, Richmond to the M3 now has traffic lights. Now, being a mainly nighttime driver, I can guarantee I will get caught up two of those. And so, so the lights go red and you just sit there. There's nothing coming around the roundabout, you know, but you can't go through a red light. That's the law. And a very sensible law it is too. 
because there might be a lorry coming the other way. But it, it's just stupid and it slows everything down. It must put at least five minutes on my journey sitting at these various traffic lights. Why do they do it? They're doing it in Bracknell Road. Yeah, because of my council tax, dear. That's what they're spending my bloody money on. Making, making the roads even more unsuitable for us all to drive on. <laughs> but the Americans have got this idea where the light flashes yellow. And why can't they do that in this country? OK, perhaps not at every single junction. Or maybe it's a technical thing. Maybe, maybe our lights are not set up to do that. But it would make sense if at certain junctions that are quiet, such as the one at the top of my road here, I've got a massive roundabout at the top, uh, at sort of, you know, about three minutes drive from here, about 20 minutes walk it is. It's not, not right on top of my house, but up there where a main road goes, and it's a funny roundabout, really, and um, uh, because of the way you have to join it. Oh, people get lost there. Oh, you easily get lost there if you don't know where you're going. But there, you know, every, I would say almost 95% of the time I'm leaving the main road to, to go around that road and the lights go red. And you sit there, you know, for a minute. Only a minute, you say. Only 30. I can hear, I can hear you now. And it's only a minute. Yeah, a minute of that one. A minute of the other one. A minute, this is another 10, 15 minutes on the blooming journey. Why can't they have the yellow flashing lights like the sensible people in the States do? I do not know. I do not know. So it's most annoying. Uh, Marge says, how are you going to post prison? <laughs> how are you going to post videos from prison? You can be famous and write a book from jail if you don't pay it. That is. Oh, I've paid it already, Marge. I've paid it already. Would they allow me to do videos from the prison? Oh, just imagine that, Marge. Stuck in a prison with all those, all those rough men. Oh, <laughs> I might throw a brick through a window tonight just to get put inside. Um, yeah, so so that's it. Also, on the um, talking of roads and that, they are at the moment doing something to the M3. Now, Bracknell sits in the middle of the M3, which is like a main motorway, and the M4. For our American viewers and listeners, uh, uh, the motorways here in the UK are, by and large, free to use. I think you might call them freeways. We don't have many um, paying toll, ro toll roads. We don't really have many of those. And um, they have decided to make part of the M3, of course, the part that I'm on, and a little bit further down, a smart motorway. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly what a smart motorway is, but I think it's where you have variable speed limits. And so on a busy day, night, whatever, they would vary the speed limit. Instead of being the maximum limit, which is 70 mile an hour, they might vary it down to 60, 50, 40, something like that. And they say this is to make the traffic flow more smoothly. Um, I, th I think they're, they're probably right. I, I don't know. I don't know. But they seem to be doing it to both motorways at the same time. So that's the M3 and the M4. Right? They are doing this work at the same time. And they keep closing part of the motorway. When do they close it? Oh! When Chris is on the road at night, of course. Of course, when else would you want to do it? No, nope. we're waiting for Chris Ridden to get in his brand new little Yaris. I've got my new car, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Get in his brand new little Yaris, or, or as I like to call it, my, my Star Cruiser, my Galactican Star Cruiser with warp capability. And they wait till I'm nearly home, and then they put the sign on saying diversion. And if I'm coming home on the M3, the diversion adds 20 minutes onto the journey. Now, at three o'clock in the morning, that ain't funny. It really isn't. Especially last night. I was, oh, God, I was tired. I actually had to put off the motorway last night as I was so tired. I was working at this place. It, oh, it was, oh, it was just a bit, now what was, it was, um... It was a it was a DJing job. It was all right, but a bit flat. Do you know what I mean? And the trouble is in this place, if, if it is quite big, and 
so therefore you have to have a lot of people in. Now, apparently, I had uh, about 150 people in and out most of the night. But this is like a, a large, like, it's almost like a school hall, I would say, with a stage. You know the old school, you know the school hall with a stage? It was just like that. Uh, and uh, they've got some new lights up there, which which look, look rather well. The trouble is, you, if, if if you haven't got that many people in there, and 150 in the, that size, to me, isn't that many, although they're happy with how much money they make. Um, then the other thing I notice, when one person goes out for a cigarette, you, you see them, they're all smoking, smoking away, not in the pub, they're not allowed to smoke inside, you see. One person decides to go for a cigarette and everyone leaves en masse. All out for a cigarette. But they never come in, back in together. They all come back in in ones and twos. And you have terrible trouble keeping it full all the time. You know, there were a couple of times last night, you know, well into the night, where suddenly you look around and there were three people in there. Whereas a few minutes ago, there might have been 60 or 70. I don't understand the mentality. They're like sheep. Like sheep. Going out and smoking away. Oh, one goes, oh, look, oh, yeah, let's all go out for a cigarette. Why do they do that? It's all very mysterious. It really is. I don't understand it. Anyway, so I, I, I thought it was a bit flat last night. And then um, I left uh, about, I was in the car by five past three. It doesn't take long to get in the car. And I started driving. Oh, I got at about four o'clock because it's about an hour and a half drive. About four o'clock, I got ever so tired, really tired. And I actually came off the motorway just in a little side, um, uh, just off of one of the A roads. And they usually have a parking place somewhere you can stop the car quite close to the motorway. I just pulled over. I left the engine running, just closed my eyes for five minutes. That's all it took. And I was awake again, but I was, I was stuck. Do you know what I mean? It's so dangerous. It doesn't matter. Once you get to that stage, it doesn't matter if you open the window and turn the air conditioning on full blast to give you freezing cold air. Oh, I've got a broken nail again. Oh, to get freezing cold air or anything like that, you know, you, you're just going to fall asleep. So you have to do something. I tell you, I closed my eyes for 10 minutes and then I, then I turned around and went back on my merry way again. Fortunately, I got home. There was no um, diversion last night, but it does keep happening. You get close to sort of your exit to come off the motorway and it says diversion road closed. Oh, you think, oh, no, not again. And it gets worse. Oh, it gets worse. And then there's a sign. There's a sign certainly on the M3. I haven't seen the one on the M4 yet. And the M M4 is the same. They close sections of it and then you have to go all the way around the houses and everywhere. It's a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. You don't care, do you? Are you laughing at me? You don't laugh at me. <laughs> and then it gets to this sign, right? Smart mo motorway opening, and then it gives a date. Are you ready for this? December 2016. They're going to be doing this work for two bloody years. For two years, I'm going to be inconvenienced. With road closures and blooming cones and everything else. And that's another thing. You know, with cones, I never understand this. Never understand this. Sometimes, say you've got three lanes, right? And there's a sign coming up. There's a particular place in Hammersmith that they do this. Just before the Hammersmith flyover. Coming out of Earl's Court, an area called Earl's Court. And onto the Hammersmith flyover. So there's three lanes. Right? So three lanes there. And... Um, <laughs> shut up, Wendy. It's not fun. It's not funny, Wendy. Stop laughing. Three lanes coming out of there. And sometimes you, you, you're coming up and it says two lanes closed. And you think, oh, here we go again. You know, we're going to be sent off before, just before we go over the flyover and round around about. Right. So two lanes closed. Even at night, in the middle of the night, that means three lanes are going to one. And the traffic starts building up, of course. And you always get these dickheads come along on the... Trying to get past everyone and then cutting in at the last moment. How annoying is that? And you all pull up closer and closer so that they can't get in, don't you? <laughs> anyway, so what they do there is they... For, for some reason, 
It's not the flyover that's closed. And I do not understand why they do this, right? So they do three lanes, and they've got the cones out to go to one lane on the left, which would be the lane to take you around the roundabout. So you think, in your mind, well, they must close it. But no, the overpass is not closed. Because once they get into... So, this, so we've got... Yeah, so we've got two lanes going on the overpass and one lane going round the roundabout. So what they do is they cone off the two lanes so you go into one lane on the left as if to go round the roundabout. And then when they get to that point where you can go round the roundabout or over the flyover, they then redirect the cones to the two lanes that go over the flyover. Why do they do that? Why, oh why, did they not just leave the two lanes going up on the bloody flyover? If it's gonna, if it's open, doesn't make sense, does it? Why would you make everyone go into one lane, slowing the entire lot of traffic down to a crawl? And I mean a crawl. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Only to get to that one lane and then push everyone back over onto two lanes. It's like getting a straw. You know, maybe you've got one of those lovely triple sh triple thick shakes from Mr. Not the McDonald's ones. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll tell you what. If you want anything to taste vile, get a McDonald's milkshake, right? And leave it to get warm and then drink it. Oh, it's vile. Absolutely vile. Oh, it's horrible. Never, never, never. Uh, no, well, I, I'm not keen on McDonald's thick shakes. Mr. Ed's. Uh, Ed's Diner Milkshakes. <gasps> oh, I like... I like those. Do you? McDo Ed's Diner. Mr. Ed's. Is it Ed's or Mr. Ed's? Ed's no, Mr. Ed's a horse, isn't it? <laughs> Ed's Diner. <laughs> Ed's Diner... Uh, thick milkshake, beautiful. Have one of those. How do we get onto those? Subject to those. Oh yes. So if you was having one of those Ed's Diner milkshakes, right? Get a straw and pinch it halfway down, and then try and suck it out. Very difficult, isn't it? Well, that's what they keep doing to the traffic in Hammersmith. I can't stand it. I can't bear it. Oh. So I don't know why they do these things. And why, oh why, they are working on the M3 and the M4 at the same time is beyond me. Because you just don't know. I could go on the M4, M3, and either one. Diversion. Oh, here we go again. Mind you, it ain't so bad if the diversion goes past one of those BP garages that sells tea and cheese London crisps. Thank you very much. Let's do some messages, all right? Um, oh, good morning to Daniel and Shane. Good morning, Daniel and Shane. People from the Black Cap, how are you today, boys? Nice to see you. And it says, we are watching you for the first time. Where have you been? We've, been, we've all been sitting here waiting for you, you two. Daniel and Shane in uh, Camden Town. Look, I've got this broken now again. My nails keep broken. Not, not snapping, but at the end. Do you know what I mean? So you're doing some... Might do, and it get, oh, it gets caught. I hate that, don't you? And I, I have to clip... But I can't do it with my teeth, can I? No, I should like to get the nail clips out and cut it. Yet another piece off the end. Is there? Is that a condition? Broken nails? Do I? Do I need to paint some stuff on or something like that? Do you remember that stuff? Did you ever have that stuff you painted on your nails uh, to stop you biting them when it was a little boy? What about you, Shane? Shane and <laughs> Shane and Daniel. I bet you had those nails. Did you have that stuff you had to paint on your nails, you two? What else did you have at school? Did you have the gloves with the string that goes all up your arms so you don't lose them? And they're like hanging at the end of your wrists when you haven't got them on. Did you have stick-on labels in your coats and shorts and swimming trunks that mum had to iron on or sew in? <laughs> oh, you've still got them all, have you? <laughs> oh, dear. Dear, dear me. Kieran says, I hate it when lanes are closed and there isn't a workman to be seen. Oh, how many times do we see this? How many times do you say, there, there they are, smoking. <laughs> Ten of them, all standing around. 
<laughs> where where the roundabout in Bracknell, they're putting traffic lights on there, which I mentioned at the beginning of the show. We never see them doing anything. All we see are piles of earth. And I'm not sure that there are many piles of earth and the, and the digger. And me and Ron, we don't think they do anything. All they do is now and again at night, when there's no one around, they move the pile of earth to somewhere else. And then the next day you say, oh, there's another pile of earth there. And then you look at the, oh, where, there, where's that one gone? They're just moving piles of earth around the roundabout. That's all they're doing. And now and again, a couple of blokes turn up. They, um, they gather around the pile of earth, open a flask, make some tea and have another cigarette. Three of them just standing there doing nothing. There was a, there's a school just down there. Um, there must have been workmen doing something in the school. And every time I drove past there, there'd be someone out the front sitting on the grass verge with a can of Coke, a sandwich and a cigarette. What are these people doing, dear? They don't do anything. Shocking way to carry on. Shocking way. Um, so, yes, you're, you're quite right, Kieran. You know, I mean, it's just a joke. Uh, Daniel says, stop biting your nails. Well, I'll tell you what, Daniel, you bring me... Have you got some of that... You've got some of that stuff that you paint on your own nails. If you bring some of that round, that'll stop me biting them. Is it supposed to give horrible taste or something like that, is it? Eh? <laughs> Wendy says, you want to try the M6. Is that even worse, Wendy? Is there always motorway works happening on that as well, is there? Oh, I hate it. I really hate it. Road works all over the place. Work going on in London is unbelievable at the moment. But the M3, it just doesn't make sense to... To, to, to do the M3 and the M4 at the same time. Uh, good morning to Mike. Uh, good morning to Mike in Newcastle, home of Cheryl I Can Mime Co. Oh, no, no. Cheryl Vecini's Rodriguez, um, Bolognese, um, Tomato Sauce, whatever her name is now. <laughs> good morning, Mike. Newcastle. Haven't tuned in for a good while. Did you go out for Black Friday? No, I certainly did. I thought it was some, some, some sort of ethnic event, Black Friday. And I got all excited. I thought we were going to go out and there'd be steel drums and bands and people braiding hair and all sorts of things like that. But there was nothing. There was this nothing is the at all. SMS text Who's calling on line from one? BT. Message from 07544118. Eight seven two five. To listen to the message, press one. To save it, press two. Shall we press to delete, one? press one. Hi, Chris. You may mock me, but remember, as you sit there and languish in your own effluent, that I'm a self-made man and I could buy you. Message sent today <laughs> at twelve. I don't quite. I may mock who. Ah, someone who's not brave enough to call in, now, boys and girls, leave a little message. Mo who am I mocking? <laughs> who am I mocking? <laughs> you can call in if you want to, boys and girls. 020-8133-6358 is the local London number, OK? Um, yeah, Mike says, Black Friday. I thought it was some sort of ethnic event. I got all excited. I thought we were going to have Bob Marley songs playing out everywhere. And all it was was a few shops selling a few goods. Did you see them on the news, these people? Is it the same in America? Because this is something that's that really, it's only taken off this year. This is the first time I've, I've seen it on the telly. They were going mad. They were going mad on the telly. In these shops. Tesco's and I don't know where else. Who else was doing it? Um, Tesco's, Asda. Lots of the shops. Lots of them. Did you see them fighting over tellies? You know, say 50 quid off a telly or something like that. Fighting over electrical goods. I saw people with tea fowl fryers. Some poor disabled woman got um, got things fell on her head. I think it was tea fowl toasters or fries or something. She was trying to get something and all, this, all these boxes fell down on her head. Shocking. Shocking. And I think the shops are to blame a lot of the time. You know, don't be opening the shops with all these crowds of people outside. What did you think was going to happen? You saw these staff. Please, calm down, calm down. No one was taking any notice of them at all. 
Well, I'm glad I didn't go to any of them. Although I must admit, I did try and log on on Thursday night, Friday morning, to the uh, Curry's website, curries.co. I actually had no intention of buying anything at all. Um, but I thought, I thought I'd just have a look around um, to see if if the, uh, what people were priced, if, if any of the tellies had come down considerably. You know, I got my eye on, although I'm not going to buy. Oh, hang on. Daniel's, Daniel's sent something. What have you sent here? Um, uh, uh, I, I just wanted to look at the prices. I, I got my eye on a 65-inch curved screen. UHF, I think it is, TV. Is it UHT? Oh, no, it's milk, isn't it? <laughs> UHF TV, which looks, oh, so wonderful. I've seen it in a few shops now, but I had no intention of buying it. And it did It looked like the same price to me. It didn't look any cheaper at all. So I don't know. I mean, was it worth it? Black Friday, all that? No, thank you. Ronnie and I went to Waitrose. There were no crowds and mad people in there. Thank God for that. It didn't happen there at all. Um, Mike says it, it did originate in the US. Um, you're looking very fit and well. Do you think so? I'm a bit fat at the moment, Mike. I've got a bit fat again. Yeah, I'm back up to nearly 13 stone. I've been, I mean, I must go on a, a, a little cutback diet again. I think it's the cheese and onion crisps. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can just open. Oh, oh, how fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I think I can show that picture, actually. Look, someone's dog is watching me on the telly. Although, why, why have you sent me a picture that... Um... Now, where, where did it say that? Let me have a look. There it is. You've sent me a picture and it's on the side, isn't it? <laughs> Who is it? It's on the side. I seem to be on the side there. For some reason, there's a dog. And someone's watching me on a large screen somewhere. Thank you very much uh, for sending that in. Uh, let me just write a little... What is your... <laughs> your? You've sent me a picture on the side. Can you send your pictures the correct way up in future, please? Let me just write something down there. 12.34, isn't it? So it's coming up to 25 to uh, 1 on this uh, Saturday. Uh, March says she works for three years at McDonald's. Did you, did you work there? Did you like that? I mean, do you get food free and all that business? What's it like working at McDonald's? You work, I think they work hard there, don't they, at McDonald's? Yeah. Uh, and Marge says, loved your new hot rod. Oh, you mean the new car? car? Red means passionate. Yeah, I've got a new red car. A red Yaris is my new starship. It got ever so dirty on the way up to my sister's at the weekend. Uh, 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 during the week. Did you see those videos? You can find those. UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk you find all the videos and links to everything I do there, uh, including the uh, two little videos that I made at my sister's when we took uh, my niece, my nieces and nephews, children to go to see Father Christmas. You see all those videos at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk, right? Uh, Marge also says, I thought smart roads were the new technology of self-driven cars with sensors in roads. Do you have those there? Uh, no, not yet. They're going to try some. I don't think there's any sensors in the road, actually, Marge. I think all the sensors are on the car. So the car is able to see everything. It's very clever. I look forward to the day where, you know, I can get into, say, say for example, last night when I was, I was really tired last night, when I can just get into a car, push a button and close my eyes for an hour and a half while it transports me home all automatically. How fantastic would that be? I look forward to that day. I really do. Uh, good morning to Rory, who's in Fulham. Good morning, Rory, who says, Kai Chris, I remember curries, but I'd rather go for an Indian restaurant. <laughs> Oh, Rory. Now, when are you coming down to um to Dulwich for the karaoke, Rory? You know I do karaoke in uh, in the Cherry Tree in East Dulwich every Sunday, OK? That's between, oh, what is it? 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. Every week, karaoke, and there's a little quiz in there as well. All free at the Cherry Tree, East Dulwich, 7 p.m. till 11 p.m. Wendy says, um, uh, ethnic event. Well, I thought that's what I thought it was, an ethnic event. I got all excited because I quite like a bit of reggae and all that. I like soul music as well. You know, soul music from the 80s. I really do. Um, 
As Marge says, I didn't mind working at McDonald's. I was a cook. Oh, do you have different departments there? I, I just assume that everyone did everything, sort of. I, 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 do you not move from one to the other then? Say, you could be serving and then go cooking and then cleaning. I, I just thought everyone did everything there. Ah, see, I'm wrong. I have learned a new thing today. A new thing. Mind you, the McDonald's in Clapham, where I work at a place in Clapham on Thursdays. And, oh, I wouldn't work, work there. The customers are so rude. So rude. The only reason I go in there is for their tea. I do like a cup of tea from McDonald's. They, say, they seem to be all right with the tea. Rory says, I can't drive. It's disability related. Uh, next Sunday karaoke. Uh, what do you mean? I can't drive, it's disability related. What can't, What do you mean? Oh, sorry, I see what you're saying here, yes. Oh, he's coming to the karaoke next week as well. Oh, I look forward to it, Rory. Right, we've got an email to do, boys and girls. <coughs> oh, good morning to nephew Jimmy, who's with us as well this morning. Good morning, nephew Jimmy Butler. 17 years old, ladies, and looking for love. Aren't you? He gets a lot of offers, Jimmy. He's not interested in them, I don't know why. You know, you've got to be a reasonable, reasonably fit to go out with my nephew, Jimmy Butler. You have to get through me first, I'm afraid, OK? Um, right, email time, email time. Don't forget, you can send an email in any time of the day, boys and girls. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And Millie writes... Hello, Chris. Millie, who's actually with this live as well today, so there we are. Hi, Chris. First of all, darling, well done. She's talking about one of her emails that she sent in last week. Uh, you were close to pronouncing the condition I have. It's actually called cerebral palsy. So that's it, cerebral. I couldn't remember what it was called. There are forms of this that are much more severe than the type I have. But in my case, it affects all four of my limbs, although my legs are the most severely affected. Physical pain is also my constant companion, which can be very mentally and emotionally draining, never mind physically. The cold impacts my pain level mightily. And yes, I do live in a drain uh, part of the USA that gets very cold in winter. How cold is it there at the moment, uh, Millie? Are you into minus digits yet? Are you, are you minus yet? Oh, I hate the cold. I hate it. It's got a bit cold here. I'm doing an experiment at the moment with my new central heating. Yes. What I've done, I switched it to... Um, timer last for, for six days last week i had it on a timer and i wrote down how much gas i've used and this week at the moment it's on constant at a given degree um certain degrees and my walk around um what do you call it thermostat thing turns the entire system on and off as it gets to the temperature so that's quite good although ronnie came around yesterday and turned it up Oh, I'm cold. Oh, it's always cold, that boy, my best mate, Ronnie. Always permanently cold. And you know why? Because his central heat is on full bloody blast all the time and you get in the car. Well, you can't breathe in the car. Oh, uh, uh. It's so hot all the time everywhere. So he comes out. Oh, I'm cold. He turned the heating up a degree yesterday. You know, I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> <coughs> Oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, God. No hanky here or anything, is there? One minute. Is it a hanky over there? No, no hanky over there. Oh, excuse me. So I don't like the cold. And I'll let you know, so the, the experiment will finish on Monday. I should work it out and uh, let you know whether I found it cheaper to use the timer or to leave the central heating on constant. Now, it's not an exact science... You know, because you won't get the same temperature each day as it was on both experiments. But, you know, it, it gives you a general idea. I, I'm, I, I've had a little read on the Internet and most people indeed seem to say that it's better use of the timer. Those people on the Internet. However, certain people, including Ron, uh, says it's better to leave it on um, uh, uh, constantly. Wendy says, bless you. Thank you, Wendy. A little bit of a sneeze there, my dear. <laughs> a -boo, a -boo. <laughs> Did you want me to sing your reggae song? Eh? Jamming. I want to jamming with you. I'm jamming. Back to the email. 
So uh, she says it, it, the cold makes her uh, much worse. It gets very cold in the winter in the USA. How cold is it there at the moment, uh, Millie? Um, so right now, my body is constantly hurting. I tell you this not to gain sympathy or pity, but to give listeners and views an idea what it's like to be with the condition that I have. It must be awful. Um, my uh, brother-in-law's brother has a back condition. That's it. Oh, indeed, Ronnie has had a back condition. Um, that the pain is quite severe sometimes, and he has to lay down on his back. Or um, maybe sometimes if we're out shopping, we might have to get a wheelchair, and I'll push him around in that. I, I actually, when, when, when I'm in the wheelchair with Ron, you know, it's not a serious thing, I'm afraid. You know, he's serious because he's hurting, but I find it very difficult to be serious. And I do like to go hurtling towards stairs and then stop just at the top where you think he's going to go over. <laughs> Go on, I'm just waiting for someone to say they're offended. Go on, just say it. Just say it, you're offended. I'm just waiting for you. Oh, people looking for me offended. All, all these people looking to be offended all the time, aren't they? Oh, get lost, that's what I say. Um, Millie says, you, remind, rem, you remarked that I haven't written in recently, and that's very true. But let me assure you, I have not, and do not ever miss a show. I hope not, Millie. You are a valued member of our congregation. Your, your view is important to us and you will be connected to a customer services representative as soon as one is available. Please hold the line. Press one now. <laughs> um, she says, I still love you to pieces, just as I always have. Thank you, Millie. I, I love you too. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, I promise. Well, I hope not, dear. We can't afford to lose the viewers. We've only got a handful. We we can't afford to. I'll, I'll get cancelled like they did to Dallas. I'll be cancelled. I will be cancelled. Dallas was cancelled. I mean, if Dallas can cancel, can you imagine how quickly I could go could go off air? All that will happen is the YouTube viewers they will viewers they will drop down so much that they'll send me a letter. I'm sorry, you're not allowed on YouTube anymore because there's not enough people watching. That's what will happen. Please don't die. In all seriousness, the reason I've been so quiet is that uh, I've not been coping very well lately. <coughs> Everyone says how brave and strong I am, which I do try to be, um, um, and, and I'm not offended when someone says that. Even you have remarked on it um, in your own way at times, and I say I'm not offended, uh, but what you see isn't always accurate, just as I said in my last email. Um, I, on medication for clinical depression, which is not isn't a nice it's not a nice thing, is it? It's not a nice thing uh, because of viewers and you, for that matter, don't need to hear me moan. We don't like moaning, really. I, we don't like moaning, as you know, Millie. Um, the show always brings me a smile, though. We'll keep smiling, dear. Smile a bit more. What you need is a coat hanger in your mouth. <laughs> smile. Keep smiling. I can't um, thank you enough for that. If anyone has any questions related to how I cope with life in a wheelchair, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, nothing's off limits. If questions come in, I will hear them on the show and will email answers for Chris to read out. I'm also willing to come on and do an interview again uh, via Skype. Let me know if you want me to do that at some point and we'll set something up. And that's uh, from Millie in Minnesota. Is Barry Manilow coming to Minnesota, Millie? Oh, he's got a new CD out. Look. I've got it here in my little pause. Barry Manilow duets. My dream duets. And he does duets with dead people. Um, <laughs> very, it's all very clever. It's very clever. Jimmy Durante, Frankie Limon, Mama Cass. Dream a little dream of me. Whitney Houston, I believe in you and me. I think that's my favourite one on there. I, I am a romantic, aren't I? I love all this old slushy, soft ballad music. I love it. Andy Williams, Moon River. It's one of my karaoke songs, that is. Look of Love, Dusty Springfield. Zing, Judy Garland, John Denver, Sammy Davis, Julia. Candyman, who can make a rainbow? That's one of my karaoke songs. Um... I wanna be loved by you. That's Marilyn Monroe. Is that where the is that where they had the fan going up her skirt? Do you remember Marilyn Monroe? 
and I did the video. It was like a fan blasting at her skirt, and it was blowing all over the place. Oh, she must have had a very windy bum. Must have been very cold on her bum, that. <laughs> what a wonderful world, Louis Armstrong. All on the brand new Barry Manilow, My Dream Durettes. Order your copy from Amazon now. Mention United Kingdom Talk with Chris Reardon and you'll get no discount whatsoever. Thank you. She asked you to be doing adverts. What do you reckon, Millie? <laughs> um, yeah, right. Uh, sure, Chris. Shall I be doing I... adverts? I hate adverts, really. Do you? I, I Why is that do. then? I hate, I hate them because I mean, they're always in. They always come at you know if you're watching something on TV. Yeah. They always, they always get right in the way. Or if you're trying to do something online and something <laughs> pops up, oh my gosh, I hate that. Hang on a second, Millie. Let me just do a few little messages that have come in here. Um, uh, Daniel says your best friend is always moaning about the cold. Shane is the same, always moaning he is cold. I don't know what's wrong with you, people. Well, I know what Shane. In Shane's case, it'll be alcohol, isn't it, Shane? Because you do like a little old bottle, don't you? Drink it away. Uh, and he says, I'm going to get you his autograph. Barry, are you going to get me Barry Manilow's autograph? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that, Shane? Do let us know. Uh, Rory says. Um, Millie has the same disability as me, different types. Cerebral means brain. Palsy means damaged. In my case, it distorts balance and visual perception, hence the wheelchair. I'm lucky because, for me, it's manageable. Uh, Rory says, you're funnier than Dallas, Chris. <laughs> she says, uh, uh, Rory also doesn't mind answering questions on disability. Robbie Williams apparently did post a death duet with Frank Sinatra, which uh, yeah, I, I didn't actually know that. So thank you for that, uh, Rory. Uh, Mike says, Cordy works at McDonald's. She is in the dining area and also helps out on the tills and in the cook area. She works so hard, sometimes 12 to 14 hours a day. I, I do know that the people in McDonald's do work very, 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 very long um, and hard hours. I do know that. Um, Marge says, can a person use any credit card like a MasterCard to purchase a gift for someone in another country and deliver it to that person there in the country? One yes. You that yes, you can. Yes. Yes, you yeah. can. No problem with that at all. You just go on, I don't know, whatever it is, Amazon, as long as they do international shipping, because they don't right. always, yeah, you've got to check that first. So international shipping, but of course, then it costs you more. So you could do that if you wanted to, Marge, yes. Um, I'm waiting for my prize of being one of your biggest fat. What prize? Did I mention I was going to give away prizes, Millie? No, you didn't. <laughs> there, there are. <laughs> and, actually, if, and actually, if we're talking about who's the biggest fan and who's the longest running listener, I would say that um, I I am, I would say, one of the top ten because I've I've been with the show since approximately, oh, August of 2008. Yeah, yeah, you have. You've been there a long time, haven't you, lady? Yep, sure have. I mean... There was, um, <coughs> I think uh, we had a, a lady, Suko, for many years. She's kind of... Uh, I don't think she's with us anymore. Oh, Tom Harris. Tom Harris. He's. I think he's longer than you, Tom Harris. Yeah, he but found, that's my much. He found the show when it was audio only on a, on a system called Live 365. Have you heard of that, Marge? Uh, sorry, Millie? Uh, yep. I sure have. Yep. Live 365, because we. that's where it started, really. Live. Yep. Well, I say that. No, it started on a, a very uh, an internet radio station called CMP, which is no longer there. And I always remember that first day I st I did the chat show, and it was was live. And I opened this microphone. And I thought, Oh my God, what on earth am I going to talk about? You know, I had a few newspapers. I had stacks of newspapers next to me, and and I don't know. I just I just switched on and, and started rabbit in a way, and I haven't stopped yet. Ten years. <laughs> It'd be ten years next year, Ma, um, uh, Millie. I know, <coughs> and oh my gosh, I mean, and when I first started listening, Jimmy was just knee high. He was Jimmy. only what nine. Yes. And, yes. And now he's now he's. What sixteen? No, now? he would he would be um he would have been eight when I started doing this, and now yep. he's seventeen. Yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh! Don't they grow up fast? He's got a car as well now, Millie. 
I know, it's amazing. You've got a Vauxhall God. Corsa. Vauxhall Corsa. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember oh, Anonymous as well? Anonymous. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yes. I, haven't, I haven't heard from him for a while. Yeah. Mm. Um, I I very much remember him. He, he kind of, I mean, I don't, let's put it this way. There are very few people that I dislike, but... I'll just put it like this. He was not exactly my cup of tea. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, Anonymous. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, uh, right. uh, yeah. Some people you, 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 you're happier with others. Um, oh, Daniel says, I'm going to get your uh, Barry Manlow's autograph. When he is at the studio, I will go down and get it for you. Which studio? No, he's gone home now. He's back at LA. He's back in LA now. I'm sure he is. He's finished recording because he was doing some shows over here. Oh, Yes. He's been on um, Strictly Come Dancing. He was on Sunday. Yeah, I remember. He was on yeah. BBC Radio 2, I think, on Sunday night. He's been on the one show. Tonight he's on Jonathan Ross. I think there was one other show. I think there was another one. Wendy will tell us. Oh, Wendy writes, I love Candyman too. Who can make your sunrise? As you know, especially as Ron Walters Jr.'s children sing the backing. That's on Barry Manlow's version of Candyman, I think. Um, oh, that was always one of my favourite songs. Do you like Candyman? It's nice. Well, it's on the new Barry Manilow My Dream Duets compact disc. Available now at Amazon. And selected record stores. Have you got any Barry Manilow CDs? Um, actually, I do. <laughs> what ones have you got? I've got... Um, it's mostly the... Greatest Hits compilation, the um, the one that has Mandy on it. Oh, yes. Uh, let's see. Read em and Weep, the yeah. Copacabana. Oh, gosh, I can't even remember them all. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm going to date myself here, but when I first started listening to Barry Men and Low, I was just little. Right. Because my mother... Um, you know, she's a retired music teacher. Right, yeah. She she made it a point to introduce me to all sorts of music yes, from the yes. time I was little. And that was one and Barry was one of the one of the ones that she introduced me to. Oh. And I also have a little bit of news for you. Oh yes. Um, you remember my Auntie Sandy, right? Auntie Sandy, yes. Well, she had a bit of a health scare. She's okay. Oh, right, yeah. She's, she's all right, but she had a brain aneurysm. Oh. Um, that she was diagnosed with uh, last year. And, she better now, though, is she? Uh, what? She better now. Yeah, um, she had surgery a couple of Fridays ago, and yeah. she's now recuperating but okay. it had grown uh 20 by 25 percent which does not which didn't surprise me at all with all the stress she'd been under with yeah. melanie uh my cousin right right um but she's okay now she's um recuperating yes. um but it was pretty scary there for a yes, little bit i think it was oh millie well my darling it's been lovely talking to you today Yep. Really is. Call in again soon. Well, you know, I would do it more often, but the problem is is that you get so busy chatting. Not with calls. I don't get busy with calls at all. And no, then, no, get you get so busy chat, rabbiting away, and then other people I know. Get, get in there before me. And I, haven't got through I, all, never... I haven't got through half of my stuff this week, as usual. <laughs> I know. So I... I sort of hesitate to call in these days. Well, worry not. Worry not. You keep warm, Millie. I'm doing the best I can. Tell her, my darling. Yep, bye-bye. All right. Lovely to speak to Millie in Minnesota. It's been a while since we chatted to her. Uh, I've just uh, missed, some, missed some messages coming through on the Facebook there. Uh, hello to Rick. Hello, Rick. Nice to hear from you, sir. And Rick is in... Oh, I can't remember where you are now. You're in... Um, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hello, Rick. Who writes uh, on the subject of the um, Barry Manilow? Uh, he's coming to Pittsburgh in July. Oh, hang on. What? What you found? Oh, oh, and Rick's been with us since July two thousand and five, and he was with us also on Live three six five. Wow, because I'm not on that system anymore. So you've been there a long time as well. I didn't realise that, Rick. Where's all that time gone? Nearly ten years. 
He says on the subject of the traffic in Pittsburgh, you should see the traffic here in Pittsburgh during our three seasons. Winter, almost winter and construction. <laughs> he says the thing with the flashing lights at certain times, 11 o'clock uh, midnight, the lights will... Oh, it's as oh, it's, it's late as that, is it? OK, 11 o'clock, uh, around about 11 o'clock or midnight, the lights will automatically change from normal to flashing. The main road will have the flashing amber lights while the less used road gets a flashing red. Ah, that's interesting. So I, I didn't know it worked like that. So thank you very much. Um, uh, Daniel says, I meet all the stars um, when they come over. So when he's back over here again, I will come. Well, we're hoping, Daniel, that Mr. Manilow is going to come and do us some concerts next year because he's doing one lot last... He's, he's on his last lot of concerts. He's stopped doing... <coughs> He's going to stop doing the touring because touring is actually very, very tiring, as I find out when I travel back from DJing. Um, but he's all over the place. Um, so he's doing one last tour in America next year, which I'm, I'm not going to America um, next year because I've spent quite a lot this year. Um, so I don't have the money to be able to uh, uh, jump on a plane just like that this time. Um So we're hoping he's going to come over here. I shall let you know when he comes and he can go and try and get his autograph. All right. Uh Wendy also, ah, oh, that's it. Wendy says he's also been on Paul O'Grady's radio show. Yeah, I said that, Radio 2. Uh, Jonathan Roster 9. Good morning, Britain, on Monday. Oh, no one watches Good Morning Britain. Have you watched it? Oh, it's so fake. Fake, 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 fake. So he's on Good Morning Britain on Monday and this morning on Thursday, which are pre-recorded, as you're correct, he's now back in the LA. Yeah, because I saw your little video this morning, Wendy, that you put on there, darling. All right? Um... Rory wants to hear Barry and Marilyn. Well, you'll have to buy the CD. Barry Manilow, my dream duet. Am I getting commissioned for this from anyone? You'll have to buy the CD, Rory, mate. All right? I can't play it. I'm not allowed to play um, uh, music on here. Rory says, what inspired the start of United Kingdom talk? I like to talk radio. Um, I really liked a bloke, guy called Mike Dickin, who's dead now. I like certain people on LBC. Steve Allen, I like. Um, Clive Ball, I like. Nick Abbott, I like. Who's on? He's on tonight, I think, 10 o'clock. Hilarious. Tune in to LBC tonight at 10 o'clock. There's a bloke called Nick Abbott. He is absolutely hilarious. And if you do call in, do mention that you heard his name here on United Kingdom Talk. And I might get a, I might get a mention as well, all right? <coughs> uh, Mike has been here since 2004, when it was CMP Radio. See, so that is actually, Mike, you must be the longest one. 2004, CMP. Do you remember that? Yeah. Marge wants Brandon to call in. Oh, Brandon will never win. No, he'll never ring in. Brandon won't ever ring in because he's not up in time. We'll do some more messages and then I'm going to disappear today, boys and girls, because it's time. We've done an hour. So that was... Uh, Wendy thought that was a good question, Rory. Well done. Now, let me see if I've missed anything. I hate to miss things. I really hate missing people's uh, messages because you're taking time to ring them in. This was sent last week um, from Warren and says, Hi, Chris. Watching... Posthumously this posthumously this week. What does that mean, posthumously? I think when someone takes me out for a bite. Oh, yeah, I was talking. That's right. I was talking last week about, you know, taking people out for meals and that. And I used to take this particular person. And all she did was comp like, she would complain constantly. Oh, that's not cooked. Oh, that's black. Oh, someone that's forks dirty. All it, w it did would moan all the time. How rude is that? Um... I think whenever someone takes me out for a bite, it's always best, even if the foot or serve not foot, <laughs> even if the food or service turns out horrible. As far as worst time goes, I had a curry out in which looked like a bit of cut off boil in the bags. <laughs> was also included. What you found a bit of plastic in there? That happened to me and my mate. We was at a pub up the road here. Now, what was it called? can't remember but it was near where ronnie lives and we went in there for some soup some tomato soup and burgers <coughs> i had a veggie burger <laughs> he had a chicken one 
<coughs> Excuse me. And um, the soup arrived, and I, I bit, and there was a bit of plastic in it, where they've obviously cut off a bit of plastic bag and poured it in. How awful. Oh, no. Nasty. Um, <laughs> he says he never ate there again. No, we never went back in there either. Was especially annoyed because I had mum with me after boasting how nice the place is. Oh, isn't it horrible to upset your mum? That happened to me as well, actually, um, Warren. On my mum's 65th birthday, I'd arranged to take her up to the hotel because they told me it was like a, a help yourself, you know, like a buffet type affair. So I took her up there and there was no buffet. There was no buffet. And I said, well, that's what you told me. So we ended up going to the harvester, which was all right. It was okay, you know, but I wanted to take her to a hotel and it didn't work out. I was so disappointed with that. Um, with regards to viewing figures, I said to myself before opening my channel that even if one person watched, I'd be happy. Shouldn't you... Shouldn't do YouTube for the buck anyway. Oh, that's, a, that's what I've always said, that Warren. We don't worry about numbers here, dear. <laughs> There's one person there, that's all fine by me. It's only my best mate that takes the mick all the time. Um, I think that's about it today. Let me just check the YouTube messages because sometimes I miss things on here. Uh, there, there's one there. Let me see. Comment. I can never see these. I never saw. Oh, good morning to Ryan. Ah, good morning to N Natasha, who's in India. Good morning, Natasha. How are you today? How lovely that you've been able to join us today. New person, Natasha. And uh, also, good morning to Ryan. Now, where are you, Ryan? Ah, now, I'm trying to look at the buildings behind you there. That looks like... Well, I'm not sure where that is. One of the Middle Eastern countries are you in, Ryan? Let me see. Can I tell? I can't tell whereabouts you are, no. But anyway, good morning to Ryan as well. And um, Rory says, I love, I love LBC. <clears throat> I know Clive Ball and Anthony Anthony Davis now on Smooth as well. That's that's right. He was my trainer at Hospital Radio. Anthony Davis, yeah, I like his shows as well. But you're quite right. He's on Smooth. I was disappointed he left LBC. He always um, done a very entertaining show. I found, but um, the other ones on there now. Uh, who was it? That said ten o'clock tonight. Nick Abbott. Do you listen to Nick Abbott, Rory? Very 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 funny indeed. He really is. Now, uh, and one more email, and then we'll disappear from Craig Adams. Hello, Craig. He says, hello, Chris. Hope you're keeping all right. Last Friday, we had our Christmas lights switch on in an event in our town, Hinkley. We now do a charity raffle stall in aid of Castle Mead Radio. Rubbish weather for that evening. Oh, yeah, that's been a bit wet, hasn't it? Rain was awful, but it didn't put any other people off. We sold all our prizes, and get this right, they raised £108, uh, which goes direct to Castle Mead Radio. Me and my mum do that each year, so our station manager uh, was very pleased uh, with that, and Castle Mead Radio front the events to switch on our lights each and every year, and they got a big stage there. So that's, that's a nice um, little afternoon out, evening out, isn't it? <coughs> Uh, Craig says, I stayed away, away from Black, Fr Black Friday sales. Uh, I did pop into Hinkley Town yesterday to have a look around those charity shops. It seems only Argos was packed out with people. Uh, Asda saw wasn't too busy. I know Asda, do wasn't it Sainz was doing a 32-inch television for like £89? God. You know, if if you wanted like a big computer, because you can use all these flat screen televisions as computer monitors, can't you? And if you wanted a big computer mo monitor, don't buy a computer. Go and buy one of those screens from Sainsbury's for 89 quid. Put it on your wall. That'd be fantastic. How big would my head be on that? <laughs> um... I don't see the point of Black Friday. I watched some of the videos on YouTube of people stamping on people. It's not good. Take care. And that's from Craig A. in uh, Hinkley. So nice to hear from you, uh, Craig. It, it really is. And um, that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for watching and listening to the show today. There'll be another live show next Saturday at the same time, 12 o'clock UK time. And you can always find that and all my other videos. I do a little video uh, between Tuesday and Friday. I do short videos, <coughs> recorded videos on that day. You can find links to uh, the audio 
versions of the show and where I'm working this week, simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and have a look at the relatively new website on there. Right? Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.